I've spent nearly my entire life loving RPGs. I've done this because of the incredible storytelling, the memorable characters, the immersive soundtracks and the addictive combat systems. And the feeling of just exploring an entire world and interacting with everything is something that other genres don't do quite as well. There is a lot to love about the genre that has taken away many, many hours of my life. But the fact is, most RPGs are not perfect. This video is going to look into the things that separate the titles that I love love from the more forgettable ones. These are the things that I hate about RPGs. Developers, this is a guide for you. Doing these things in RPGs is not fun, so stop doing it. Yeah, this is purely the opinion of one person, but I think you will agree with at least some of these points. Just about every point that I'm going to discuss is purely from a game mechanics perspective. JRPG tropes and narrative devices like the power of friendship and amnesia will not be mentioned. But on that topic, I do think that some of the best storylines are in fact based on main character amnesia, Xenogears, Planescape Torment, so so good. Anyway, this is my list, but I would love to know what you think, so let me know in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed anything about this video, throw me a like. It'll help me slay YouTube's final boss, the algorithm. Alright, let's get into it. I'm going to start with a minor point, something so trivial yet it still makes me stop, look up at the ceiling of my gaming room and ask why. I've completed loads of RPGs over the years, easily into the hundreds, and I really like knowing how long they take me to complete. But guess what? I have a life. I like coffee. I need to use the loo. I can easily get distracted. I can't find a save point when my wife tells me that I need to go to the shops to pick up a few rolls of toilet paper and a block of Neapolitan chocolate. So I pause the game. Sometimes I pause for a minute, sometimes I pause for hours and hours and hours. When I pause the game, I would expect the game timer to pause too. You know, because the game is paused, you're not playing the game. Common sense, right? Apparently not. Way too often the game timers continue to tick along when I'm AFK, which results in a completely inaccurate playtime. One of the few games that does this so well is the Final Fantasy VII Remake. After a few minutes in the menu screen without pressing a button, the timer will stop completely. I appreciated this so much, probably a little too much. Music is such an important part of an RPG. From emotionally driven piano pieces to epic orchestral battle themes, expertly composed soundtracks can do wonders in the RPG experience. Or the music could suck. That is also a possibility. But here, I'm talking about when there is awesome music that isn't used right. When there's an awesome theme on, totally suited to what that part of the game needs to be doing, but then it's cut off prematurely for whatever reason. A common example of this is when there's some emotionally driven field music playing and as soon as a random battle is initiated, this is replaced by the regular old battle theme. More specifically, this scene in Shadow Hearts 2 has an epic lead up to a boss fight. The mood is set, the awesome music is playing, I am pumped. Then BAM, enter the boss fight, begin the regular boring battle theme. I am no longer pumped. If you've played any JRPG ever, chances are that you'll begin your journey as a low-leveled weakling. On your way to saving the world or killing God, you'll possibly cross paths with or have to battle against someone clearly stronger than you. In these cases, said enemy should kick your ass. They're meant to. This makes sense. What shouldn't happen is seeing a scene of your defeated party following a battle that you clearly won. RPGs don't do this. It makes no sense and it annoys me. Come on! No way, I can lose. No, no, you again. Oh, you're slipping, Leon. I went easy on him. On the topic of defeat, this one is even more annoying. Why do party members have to be alive for the split second the enemy dies in order to gain experience from the battle? What about all the good work they did through the battle? It's like if the clear MVP of a basketball game sits out for the final few seconds of the game, is their hard work disregarded? Nope, an RPG should be the same. 
Strategy RPGs often reward characters EXP per attack and this makes a lot of sense. I thought that the FF8 experience system was also cool in that the one who lands the final blow gets more EXP, you know, because this also makes sense. The amount of times my poor white mage died at the end of battle after being the only reason the rest of my party was still alive, damn, it breaks my heart that these white mages get no reward after all their hard work. Side quests are something that RPGs can either do very well or absolutely horribly. The good ones will teach you about the world and the characters and provide incentive to do them. The Witcher 3 for instance is amazing with its side quests. So what about the bad ones? I'm talking repetitive hunt quests, basic fetch quests, cat finding quests, rat slaying quests, vegetable gathering quests, the list goes on. But that's okay, I mean they're optional, right? Well, sometimes they're not. When games force you to complete these, that's when there's a problem. I'm looking at you Torna, there are barriers in this game that requires you to complete loads of these side quests and this is by far the worst part of this game. Developers, do not do this, ever. If they are compulsory, just call them The Quest. It's really hard to argue against the statement that games have gotten easier over time. This is a combination of us getting better, but also developers wanting to appeal to everyone, which is a conversation for another day. Most games these days seem to have multiple difficulties. This is a great idea, honestly. What isn't a great idea is the developer's inability to know what easy, normal and hard should be. If I'm playing on normal, I should not be able to mindlessly destroy every enemy all game without using my brain. Games that are too easy means that there is no requirement to actually learn the ins and outs of the combat system. It also provides less incentive to really think about how to build your characters or to do the optional things in the game to get you stronger, you know, because the wooden sword that I've had from the start is doing a good enough job. Two games that come to mind here are Fire Emblem Three Houses and Kingdom Hearts 3. I played both of these on normal and they were way too easy. My enjoyment was lessened because of this. Yeah, I am aware that most of the time you can change the difficulty on the fly, but that's not the point. Developers should test their games better. Okay, I'll make this one really quick. Random encounters are the one thing that worked fine 20 to 30 years ago because us gamers didn't know any better, but now we do. Games are evolving and seeing enemies on the screen for seamless battles is now so common and I'm glad about this. Looking back to games like Final Fantasy 2 and Breath of Fire 2, wowee, how did we play this shit in the past? I played through both of these games recently and my god, I struggled through every second of them. Now there are games like Final Fantasy 8 and Breath of Fire 1 that provide you with items and abilities to turn off encounters altogether, if only more games did this. I love it when characters die, blown up in an explosion, shot through the heart, stabbed in the back with an oversized Masamune. I love every second of it. Okay, in the interest of not sounding like a complete psychopath, let me clarify. A strong story and cast of characters is one of the most important things in a video game for me. When a character that I love and who I've formed a strong attachment to dies, yes, that can be devastating. But it can also be so, so powerful if done correctly and many of the best, most memorable moments in my favourite games revolve around the deaths of my favourite characters. That and a quality death can also be a catalyst for some seriously good character development. I don't care if every scriptwriter out there took a page out of George R.R. R. Martin's book and killed them all. Die. 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 So this is fine, but my problem is when these characters are brought back to life for no good reason. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but if you've played through a certain massive JRPG series that's in the peak of its popularity, you'll know what I mean. The main problem with doing this is that in the future, I just won't take death in the game or series seriously ever again, therefore turning me into an emotionless war when future characters die. The fragility of life and the power and emotion of death no longer exists and this is very poor writing. Remember when we used to spend hours flicking through chunky game manuals to learn the game's ins and outs? Those were the days. I would happily pay an extra $5 for a meaty instruction manual in my modern physical games, wouldn't you? Well, those good old days are now gone. Now a game will do one of three things. 
One, not tell you anything, requiring you to search the internet for answers. Two, have all of your answers categorized inside menus, allowing you to easily refer to them anytime you want. Or three, hit you with tutorials. Seriously, tutorial giving is an art. Developers should employ tutorial makers who actually know how to pace out and deliver tutorials in a way that isn't overly intrusive or an overload to the brain. Here's a game that doesn't work, Monster Hunter Rise. Now, Rise is a complicated game and it has a huge learning curve with loads of mechanics to sink your teeth into. So then why not spam countless multi-page tutorials in your face every time you talk to an NPC? I read through a total of two of these tutorials before it became too much for me. Now, this last one is something that many of you may disagree with, but I'd like to think that some of you know where I'm coming from. Post game content. This refers to all the game after the game. If shit goes down after the end credits roll, it's post game. I hate this so much. Often, the most enjoyable parts of a JRPG for me is prior to the final dungeon, when everything opens up, when side quests are aplenty, when optional dungeons are unlocked, and when super bosses appear. Doing everything I can to make my characters as strong as possible for super bosses, and then the final boss is so much fun. But when the credits roll, that's all, folks. I've clocked out. I'm done. I'm ready for my next RPG. So don't hit me with more stuff. I would have happily done 30 minutes prior. I have absolutely no motivation to do this. This happens so often, but perhaps the biggest culprit is Dragon Quest XI, which has an endgame that exceeds my pure hate of endgames. The worst part about Dragon Quest XI is that the game is so damn good that I was actually conflicted. And while on this topic, when the completion of a new game plus is required for extra dungeons, bosses or story concepts, that's just as bad, usually. I want to know what you all think about this one, so let me know in the comments below. Wow, after spending the last several hours making this video, I've got to wonder why I still play RPGs. But then I'm reminded of the stories, the characters, the world, the music, the combat and the growth mechanics. These are the things that make RPGs the best genre ever. But in order to really appreciate something, you need to see the flaws and this genre has quite a few things that really irritated me. What about you? What are the things that you hate about RPGs? Let me know in the comments. Also hit like if you enjoyed this review, it would help me out a lot with the final boss of YouTube, the evil algorithm. This was Hellfire RPGs, see you next time. Run.